Alrighty. Mark your fingers in uh first Samuel sixteen because we'll be going there. Okay. We'll we'll be going there. Uh and then go to Colossians three. I have it open right here. I'm gonna talk about the Psalms, the hymns, and the spiritual songs and what kind of music you should be listening to if you're a Christian. All right, I'll just read the whole chapter because it kind of matters for what I'm going to say. If you didn't be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, conspicuous, conspicuous concupiscence i don't even know what that means and covetous covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of god cometh on the children of disobedience and the in the which ye also walked with him. in the which ye also walked some time when you lived in them but now ye also put off all these things anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth why not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on the charity, which is in the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands own husbands as it is fit in the lord husbands love your wife and be not bitter against them children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the lord fathers pro provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as men pleasers but in singleness of heart fearing god and whatsoever ye do do it heartily as to the lord and not unto men knowing that of the lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the lord christ but he that doth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. <laughs> All right. It's a long, long chapter, kind of, but we'll get through it. We'll chew our way through it. It's probably going to be longer than five minutes, you know. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about specifically is... Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, that only lists what a good song is. It doesn't list what a bad song is. So how do you know what a bad song is? Are there even any bad songs? Because... I'm going to say... Anything that is not, where is it? Anything that is not a psalm, a hymn, or a spiritual song is a bad song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bad. Right? Because if you look through each of these on this list that gives you good things, there's also bad things. And then if you, I mean, if you look back at the beginning of the verse, it's saying set set your affection on things above not on the things of the earth and then it lists all this stuff so all the good things it has on here it has an opposite that corresponds with your affections on things on the earth or whatever so like when it says wives submit yourselves unto your husband the opposite would be being rebellious husbands love your wives the opposite would be like hating your wife or beating her or something children obey your parents is disobedience is the opposite of that uh, provoke not your children the opposite of that is like antagonizing them 
right? And each of these things has an opposite bad thing that corresponds to it. So it, it makes sense that 316 that talks about the songs and hymns and spiritual songs has bad songs that correspond to it that you shouldn't listen to. Right, I can't define what a bad song is. Like, all songs are not created equal. I don't think the Bible limits you to like specific instruments. I'm not going to condemn all worship music, but you should listen to the words in some worship music, the lyrics in those. Uh, some of them don't correspond to the Bible. I like older songs and hymns and stuff, but there are also good modern songs, and Christ Alone is a modern worship song. It's excellent. Great lyrics. I don't care about the music. Music is irrelevant. All right. Uh, let us... Here, I'm going to look at my notes a minute. Oh, yeah, I should also note that it, it says singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So uh, if a song is not putting grace in your heart, like, I think that excludes heavy metal right there. Mm -mm. Maybe even some rock. All right, all right, okay, okay, okay. We're going to go back to that first Samuel to read you a story. Oh, that's the wrong bookmark. All right, it's first Samuel 16, starting in verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning player on a harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person with and the lord is with him wherefore wherefore Saul sent messengers unto jesse and said send me david thy son which is with thy sheep and jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by david his son unto saul and david came to saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer and Saul sent Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Okay. So I, I'm just going to assume David wasn't playing any heavy metal in this for my... I don't think you can play heavy metal on a harp, but... I'm going to assume he's singing singing and playing songs that would please God because, you know, David's a man after God's own heart. So anyways, whatever music David played made the evil spirit leave Saul. So music has the power to uh, cast out demons, it sounds like. So if good music has that power, does not imply that bad music can attract unwanted evil spirits and it is a this is obviously wasn't just a one-off thing i mean i don't think there's anywhere else recorded in the bible that says it but when they found out paul or not paul saul had an evil spirit let's see they immediately said seek out a man who's a cunning player on the harp they knew from past experiences that they needed to get somebody, obviously. I mean, it just, if evil spirit or if evil spirits can be cast out by good music, does it not imply that bad music can attract 
evil spirits. Radio, radio, radio. I think there was one more thing I wanted to say uh, about neutral songs. Let me. I don't have this verse in my notes. I gotta Google this real quick. Uh, let's see here. That's not the King James Version. <sighs> Let me scroll down to there. Ah, oh, there it is. Matthew 12, 30. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. There is no neutral ground. Right. If what you are doing is not pleasing God, it's displeasing God. You'll be like, oh, wh what about the duck song? There's nothing wrong with the duck song. It's a good song. No, the duck song is not a good duck song. Because uh, let me, I don't have this one here. It's just coming to my mind. I think it's Philippians 4 too. No, it's not. Uh, well, the one, I think it's in Philippians. I'm not very organized, as you can tell. But, give me patient. There it is, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. <laughs> Uh, the duck song is not just, it's not honest, it's not true, it's not pure, it's not, it's not lovely. There's not any virtue in it or praise. So when we're not, so when we're, we got the duck song stuck in on our head, it's preventing us from thinking about things that we should because we're, all we can think about is the duck song. So even the duck song's bad. Who knew? I just wanted to. I don't have anything against the duck song specifically. I just like the duck, it's duck song's first thing I came up with. But I just wanted to point out that there's no neutral ground because any song that might be like the language is not bad or something, it gets stuck in your head and prevents you from thinking on things that are of good report and good virtue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's basically all I have to say. Uh, you could tag on Romans 8, 5 at the end. I mean, that can be applied to any message. You just tag that on to the end of any message. For they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they are of the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can't please God if you're in the flesh. All right. That's all I have to say. You know, is... Okay, bye.